Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mirko Movie Guys. I'm Clint Chaffer and this is my buddy Chad Weeks. And we're a couple guys who like movies and like to talk about movies. Clint, we've got a couple special guests tonight. we got Veronica and Sandra Hodge Hampton coming in. And we're going to be talking about their recently released short, Rosalind, and it is a very emotional story. So uh, really looking forward to having this conversation, Chad. Absolutely. We can also talk a little bit about what it takes to become a director and a screenwriter, that sort of thing, how you get into that sort of uh into that sort of space in the world. So this will be a, this will be a really fun conversation. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. So with that, grab your popcorn, fill up your drinks, and enjoy the show. Veronica, Sandra, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. We're excited to be here. Yes. Yeah, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule as well to uh, to, to jump on our little podcast here. We're excited to uh, to talk to both of you about uh, about your film and, uh, and your backgrounds, and this is just going to be a fun conversation. Absolutely. I'm really excited about this. And, and it's- I don't call it a little po- podcast because you guys are starting to have some big people on, so... <laughs> I don't call it a little podcast. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I appreciate that. <laughs> that calls for a high five. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you get some good numbers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So, so uh, as far as for uh, introduction to our listeners, uh, how about uh, Veronica? You want to kick us off and give us a little background on on what you do and how you got started, and then we'll kick it over to Sandra. Okay. Well. I am currently a first assistant director, uh, trying to transition into being a director. Um, I've been in the film business since 1989. Y'all can do the math. (laughs) Um, I got into the business, coincidentally, um, kind of ties in with the short film that that you saw. Um, uh, My partner was an AD when I met her in 1989 and she introduced me to the film business a bit reluctantly because I wanted to be a social worker because I thought that was more meaningful. Needless to say, I use those same gifts in the film business. (laughs) Yeah, I can see Um, that. So started out as a production assistant, worked my way up into getting into the Directors Guild of America. Um, uh, Was very thrilled with that. and then worked up to being a first assistant director. I've been a first AD for uh, several years now, uh, probably at least at least a decade. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's 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 very rewarding. Um, it's an extremely difficult job, but we get to do a lot of cool stuff. Especially, I love I, I do a lot of action, so blowing up things and chases and people swinging from wires. And it's just, it's super exciting. Could, could, so, you, could you go into that a little bit deeper and just tell me like what, what a first a first uh, director does there. So you can first assistant director, I think it was. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the title was um, <laughs> when uh, there's usually three assistant directors on any given project. You have the second, second, a key second, and then the first AD, Perfect. they all have different functions, but, they all come with different levels of responsibility. Mine is the most out of those three job positions. Um, but when I'm hired, I'm usually hired by producers, UPM, unit production managers, and or directors that will choose, no, I want to work with Veronica. Um, once I accept the job, um, I will take the script and I will break it down. I turn it into a massive puzzle. And I find the best way that I feel um, that we can shoot it um, in my mind, I think of uh, crew morale and rest, which are super important Um, because with having rest and good crew crew uh, morale, you have less, less accidents. So super, super important. Um, And which is even more so nowadays because people get injured and it's usually from, exhaustion. Um, so once I've, I've turned it into a, a schedule, my key second and I will work together to disperse that information to everybody. 
So everybody knows, okay, this is what we're doing. This is the first day of shooting. These are the actors that are wearing, uh, working. This is, the, this is the scenes that we're doing. This is how much I think we need per scene as far as time goes. And typically a filming day is 12 and a half hours, half hour for lunch. And, uh, and sometimes there's a couple of days in there where it might be a little long because we're at a specific location that uh, maybe it's so expensive that we got to cram it all in that one day. Whatever scenes belong in that particular location, we're going to cram it in there and shoot it. Um, so, but, you know, things kind of balance out. Um, I run the set uh, from, I'm there before crew call, which is the call time that everybody shows up, not shows up, but is there to ready to work at that moment. So I'm there a little bit early, do a little private rehearsal with the director and just the actors so we can walk through, you know, what the director's blocking, what their vision is for that scene. And then after we're happy, we call it a marking rehearsal. Then we bring all the department heads. Typically most of the crew will come and watch and see uh, what we're actually shooting, what the blocking is so that they all can prepare what they need to be ready for usually lighting 45 minutes to an hour. So in an hour, we're rolling camera. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm driving that boat. I'm pushing that boat to make sure that we are um, filming when we're supposed to and we finish when we're supposed to and we break on time for lunch when we're supposed to. Um, and then any, any little issues that, that happen, um, rather than having it turn into a massive fire, try to you know, deal with those moments or those issues in those moments and, um, and take care of them. Or, or, okay, if this didn't work, let's do this. So I'm also a, a massive problem solver. So it's a lot wrapped up in one title, but. I, f I feel like that one title would actually be a better fit for you there, just a massive problem solver. Cause that's everything you just said could have been wrapped up with a <laughs> massive problem solver. Whatever problem there is, I'll solve it. I'm gonna fix it, I'm gonna fix it. So, and I, that's actually one of my favorite parts is uh, when things look like they can't be done. Um, and I'm, I always like to walk away and think about it. Now I'll get those questions. Well, Ronnie, Ronnie, what do you think? I said, you know what? I need to look at it as a whole and I will be back to you. And so it kind of takes the pressure off me having to respond in that moment. And I get so giddy in my with the door shut laughing because I'm like, ah, this is it. I don't know why they couldn't see it. <laughs> but my eyes see it. Yeah, so absolutely. That's, fun <laughs> that's a great way to look at it, just walking away yeah. and getting a better perspective of it. So well well, Sandra, you, you have quite the quite the background as well within movies. Uh, writer, producer, director. Uh yeah. give it give us some insight on uh, on how you got to where you're at. Well I'm I started on the independent side and really doing my own shorts, um, actually quite a few. And then <clears throat> I was blessed enough to get a patron of the arts, uh, Miss Betty Ann Gardner. She was the owner of Soft Sheen Products. They, they have since sold it to L'Oreal, but she really gave me the money to do my first film, which was really my film school. And then my second film, uh, she basically paid my credit card bills because I used my credit cards to make it. And it was a, a documentary on acting called The Truth, The Pain, The Sacrifice and Actors uh, Reality. And that was a huge thing because I had veterans and novice actors talking about their truth, their pain. And to hear Ed Asner say at that time, because this was back in like, uh, like 2000, and he hadn't done up or anything like that. He, his career hadn't been revitalized, I'll say. And he would say, the pain for me is to have all this experience and they don't wanna use you because you're a certain age. But of course, since then, he, you know, before his death and I was just so honored that he would even agree to be one of the veterans and Malcolm Jamal Warner saying, you know, there's the job of the actor and then there's the celebrity, you know, with the job, you can go home, but the celebrity is all there. So I'm really proud of that project and uh, winning an award at Houston and all of that stuff. And that got me to be uh, 
personal assistant to Otis Salee, the director choreographer on Broadway. And I learned everything, Broadway, uh, music videos, uh, television, because he worked with Debbie Allen on Different World and then Queen Latifah and Living Single and all of that. And then I went from there and worked with Kevin Hooks, who was uh, EP on uh, prison, prison Break and he's done the Nelson Mandela. I mean, his <laughs> resume is off the chart. And from there, that actually, the film that I was on with Kevin, I was his director's assistant, meaning I was his assistant, not first assistant director, but personally, personally working with him and for him. And uh, Stephen Baldwin and Lawrence Fishburne were in that movie called Fled. And that's where I met this wonderful lady. <laughs> and after that was over, Lawrence's uh, assistant, I think a year later, quit. And they called me. I didn't even know Lawrence knew my name because I was so focused doing my job. And I was like, oh, OK, well, sure. And, and I and with him, I mean, went to did the Matrix, went over to mm -hmm. London to do Event Horizon, mm -hmm. um, just all over the place, literally all over the place. Um, and then I went out on my own. And that's when I did the, the documentary and some other shorts and when my wife wanted to write the story about Rosalind, I was like, okay, we'll write some things down and, and I'll take it from there. And she wasn't quite ready yet. So I just let her take her time. And then when she was eight ready, years, eight years of time, eight years yeah. of time. <laughs> I, I, can, I can imagine that would take some time. Yeah. <laughs> so when she was ready, it just dove right in to, to shape it um, so that it will still be personal but also palatable for audience members to, to see their story as well as her story. So it was, it was a good, it was a good journey. Yeah. And then, you know, and in the meantime, while she's on set doing first thing, I'm at home writing and corralling our awesome four teenagers. <laughs> Help us! Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Send help. No. Um, no. But yeah, so that's so that's where, where we are right now is I've just been focusing on writing projects. So, you know, both of you have been uh involved in in large productions. You just dropped, you know, Lawrence Fishburne. I mean, that's just Which like, I'm really I, glad you went there. I'm just thinking of the Matrix and yeah. how I mean that's like one of my favorite series, right? So I mean it's just I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the chills, like just yeah, thinking yeah. about it. But do you have that? Like when you're on set with, you know, you talk about some of these celebrities, right. And, and, you know, Veronica, you've been on, I know, I think some of the X-Men series and things of that nature, which we're huge fans of that as well. Uh, I mean, these are huge, big name actors. Uh, do you still get like that jittery feeling? Starstruck. Yeah. Starstruck. starstruck. When you're gonna... well, I know I did when we were, when we were in London and, Tom Cruise was doing the Stanley Kubrick movie the same time we were doing Event Horizon. And his assistant called and said, oh, Tom wants to have lunch with Lawrence. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, and I told Lawrence, I was I called him Mr. Fish. I said, Mr. Fish, I'm going to tell you right now, I need to escort you over there. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, OK, <laughs> sure. So I walked over there, you know, and they're they're talking and, and Tom Cruise said, well, would you like to stay for lunch? And I'm thinking, <laughs> but I said, no, no, thank you. Thank you for inviting me because I knew I had a lot of work to do. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm thinking, Heck yeah, I? <laughs> you know, but I didn't do that. And and one time <laughs> Lawrence told me to call Sidney Poitier oh, and ask yeah. if, he, if he wants to go out to dinner because he was in London, too. And I was like, okay, I can do that. <laughs> He's like, okay, tell Lawrence that. I was like, yes, sir. You know, if, but yes, my answer unequivocally, yes. So that's awesome. Um, I, I, there's definitely been a few people that have made me lose my words. Um, <laughs> actually, just recently, I'm a huge fan of Patti LaBelle. Yeah. Oh. 
Big fan. Mm-hmm. I've seen her in concert many times. And every time I'm leaving crying because her voice yes. just, I don't know, resonates with me. And she did a, 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 co- a co-star role on uh, Greenleaf. And uh, I was... I was beside myself. <clears throat> anyway, she she comes into the room and I I almost rushed her. I, I damn near tackled her. I was like in her face, just hello, Miss Miss LaBelle. I mean, and I'm like, I'm gonna lie, I'm a huge fan and I never do this, and I'm gonna hug you now. And I, <laughs> That's um, awesome. <laughs> but we ended up really, really connecting, and uh, I helped her with her dialogue. The whole she was in like two to two episodes, and I just had a blast. I mean, I had a blast. Um, my mother in law at the time was was living with us, and um, uh, I took her to set because we have these big these big church days where there's music. Patty sang um, a song, and I had to bring my mother in law. I was like, "You gonna, you have to come with me." And uh, oh my God, it was like two girlfriends, two <laughs> little old, cute little old ladies just sitting there giggling. And it was the best. I'll, I'll never forget that. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm not going to say you don't sometimes get nervous when you are around people with these big names, but what about M. Night? You look oh, M. yes. M. Night. M. Night Shyamalan? <laughs> Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Wow. Let's hear this one. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what about? I okay. like the way Sanders like. What about M Night? Talk, talk about that one. <laughs> she called me. She called me baby because she was in Philly. Yeah. And she, baby, I'm working with him. I'm like, oh, yes, man, I know. That's cool. I know what awesome. I saw him today. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, my my favorite genre is horror. Yeah. And um and in my top ten films, he has like five. Yeah. In my top. 10. I I'm with you on that. Uh, like. <laughs> Um, and my ultimate favorite is The Visit. Not okay. only is it creepy, but it's hilarious. I was laughing so hard. It's, I love the, 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 the combination of humor and just gross and creepy. It was so such a feel-good movie to me. <laughs> so so um, they, I, it was season two of Servant. And they were having some kind of struggles. Some of their, uh, there was an AD that was having health issues or two of them were having health issues. And um, one of the, two of the producers were from Ozark that I had worked with before. And they're like, Ronnie, we know you don't travel, but we just need help. So if you could come and help us for two episodes, that'll give us more time to vet somebody. I said, okay, I can do that. So, um, but I wasn't gonna work with M. Knight because I was going to work with a different director. But when I got there, of course, we were, we were uh, um, scouting and we went by the set and the producers were like, Ronnie, um, M, M, M wants to meet you. He does. <laughs> <laughs> and that wants to meet me. <laughs> that's, that's crazy, isn't it? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm ready. Shake it off. I'm breathing. It's cold. So I'm <laughs> like, okay. Okay, this cold air is helping me because I'm having a hot flash. So I walk over and he's, you know, and he's tall, handsome guy. And he just turns in this big, beautiful smile. And he's like, you're Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie. And just hugs me. And I'm really? hugging him back. <laughs> and he's like, thank you so much for coming. I've heard such good things about you. Thank you so much for coming to help us. I'm like, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? I'm like... I love the visit. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'm I'm I I I'm at a loss for words. I'm a huge fan. I love the visit. I can't wait for my children to get old enough for me to share all. <laughs> <of the visit. laughs> yeah. So I, anyway, yeah. Si- signs is mine. Like I feel like Signs is the, is like the most realistic horror film ever because of the fact that like. That's what you would do in a situation like that. You would be l- glued to your TV, waiting for the next piece yeah. of information to go, and it's just such a chilling way of telling it and they have such a a casual way of 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 scaring you like you see that that creature in the school video and it's terrifying how is that or the ankle you see fingers under the door come on yes yeah Yeah. that click i can still hear that click yeah so (laughs) i haven't shown i haven't shown i've shown six cents to our daughters but that i want 
but I think it's a little too, but not yet. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be woken up screaming in the middle of the night. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So, so uh, while while we're on the subject of some of these actors and actresses, uh, I know you did when we heard you talk uh, in Dubuque. There, you said, uh, Veronica, you said you were working with uh, uh, on Star Girl recently, correct? Correct. Okay, so Star Girl, I watched a few episodes that I haven't seen seen all of it, uh, but I I did notice Amy Smart was in there. Okay, and I'm a big fan of Amy Smart. It's like I've had a crush on her since as long as (laughs) since since Road Trip, (laughs) and I'm just wondering is is she great? Is she a great person that I expect her to be, or is this something I probably don't want to ask? That's where I met Amy. I did Road Trip. Okay. Okay. Oh, no kidding. So, yeah. yeah. It's awesome. I yeah. love another that movie. One of my, that's another one of my faves oh. right there. Ever since that movie, it's like, I, that is, I, I, I love her. <laughs> but go ahead. Sorry. Uh, and, and she was still fairly new. Maybe it was only her second or third movie. So she was still really new. And so nice. And um, she definitely had a couple of scenes that made her nervous. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I noticed it. I noticed when people are off. I think that's one of my super superpowers. And I pulled her aside and I said, um, no matter what, you just need to do what makes you comfortable. Just yeah, because you want it to be authentic. Just do what makes you comfortable. If it makes you uncomfortable, don't do it. There you and go. She was like, oh. And I hugged her and she went and she did her scene. And uh, fast forward to 2018 which i think is the first year we did star girl and i saw amy's name on the cast list and i was so excited and i was like i wonder if she'll remember me and when she saw me she hugged me so tight oh my god ronnie i i I mean it was like we were old girlfriends yeah Um, like long lost cousins or something and um now we get a christmas card from her every year um Mm -hmm. and it's so funny that her husband came to set and I was like, why? I've worked with your husband. Why do I know him? And, um, um, I did a commercial for, um, Oh my gosh, now I'm drawing a blank. Um, it was one of the very first home improvement shows, ra- uh, reality shows way back in the day. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the tired trading, spaces. Spaces. trading spaces. Just, mm-hmm. oh, I yeah. did a commercial for them and her husband, was one of the one of the characters. Oh. And he and I said, I'm not kidding. I still have that apron from that commercial hanging <laughs> in my garage. And, uh, and he remembered me. And it was just, I'm like, of course you two. They're so sweet and so real. And Amy is just the loveliest human being. Very caring, conscientious, kind, on time, um, and just ready to go, prepared. Um, it's it's yeah no. she's 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 special that's good I, i'm glad to hear that's that's the sort of thing <laughs> you always like, want to hear so like, yeah. some people say you never meet your idols or things like that because you know you, you never know what you're gonna get but that's perfect i love hearing it well, well she, she's always asking as soon as she sees me how sandra and the kids she always you know awesome. how's that's your cool. family or before anything so she's 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 a good egg well, we could sit here and ask you questions about, you know, the <laughs> all the different Hollywood uh, actors that uh, that you've met before, but uh, but let's get into let's get into Rosalind and uh, and really uh, really talk about uh, about this film. Um, this was, I mean, we Chad and I have both watched it a couple times now, and uh, it, absolutely amazing work uh, and the story behind it. Um, you know, we got to hear your story, I guess, before before we watch it, which I think was even. Uh, uh, even more powerful, right? Yeah. But uh, but talk to us a little bit about you know, Sandra. This is this is a a story of Veronica's that 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 you're writing, and mm-hmm. and a, a very emotional part of that. You guys are you know, <laughs> you're 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 married. You're together. You're also then trying to create this story together. Tell us a little bit about that dynamic of of creating this this short. It was actually pretty easy because i mean we obviously get along no i'm kidding (laughs) but work working working together was really cool because we kind of have the same work ethic and we're not um driven by any kind of ego or anything so we like to put on the screen stories that are going to touch people stories that are going to get them to think a different kind of way and so when I was talking to her about it, I wanted to honor 
how she felt during that whole process, but also open it up so that it's not so, so heavy that people want to go slit their wrists after they see it, you know? So um, I added the Phoebe character Mm -hmm. to give it some distance because while she was doing her caregiving, even when she told me this story at first, I was like, Mm -hmm. you know, you kind of enabled her a lot. You took away her independence and nobody wants that. And then they start lashing out already they're lashing out because you know their body is failing them for whatever reason but then whatever they do let them do other otherwise you can you can forget it so adding that layer to it i think helped caregivers understand they don't have to do everything it's almost like having a little kid and you're trying to teach the child how to tie their shoe well if you don't let them struggle they're never going to tie that shoe you know, so letting them do something, even if it's a little thing, just taking the cap off of something or feeding themselves and letting it fall, whatever, because I had to do some caregiving with my mom uh, before uh, Veronica took her on the set of Greenleaf. You know, she was she was fine. She had uh, Parkinson's. So her hand would shake and it's the hand that she uses. But whatever she could do. I always let her do, you know, helping her a little bit up the stairs or just being there while she goes up this, you know, that kind of thing really meant a lot to her because she was very independent all her life. So that also informed uh, me writing Rosalind because she was living with us at the time and, and she didn't pass away until 2020, like right before COVID shut everything down. Um, So I understood and she understood what I was going through when we got to that critical part with my mom where she was bedridden and she couldn't do anything, you know, and it's sometimes those days were very tough for me because I'm used to seeing her so vibrant and, ah, you know, taking on the world. So that, so Rosalind was really a, a labor of love for everyone, not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera too. And those pictures that you see in the uh, therapy room, those are all pictures from the cast and the crew of oh, wow. people who've died from cancer. Yeah. Really? Real people. You That's know, cool. For real. And the, the, yeah. You, so, you, you guys focused in on that too. And I noticed that there was a yes, moment where you kind of yes. lingered on that scene. That's very cool that you brought that, that you brought that to light. Cause I didn't know that Sandra. Uh, I'm really glad that you went that direction, um, because when uh, there's a, there was a line in there that says, uh, "the we, you never had the patience to let me try," and my wife, who was there with me, uh, said the same thing. She's like, she said exactly what you did. She's like, it's she's like, it's like a little kid too. If you don't let them try to do things, they'll never learn how to do it. And that it's like, I'm just, I'm so glad because this is the second time that we've had one of these conversations where my oh. wife is vibing with the the director <laughs> or the writer or whatever. So she's, it's it's cool. I'm I'm very lucky to have her. So. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm really glad that you brought that up. Oh, good, good. Um, and I didn't see it. I didn't see that. And and I will tell you, when Sandra and I reconnected and decided we were going to build this life together, um, I was still in a very dark place in a in in mourning. So she actually helped me go through my healing. I had, um. I was even not necessarily reluctant to have a relationship, but to watch somebody suffer um, because she suffered. I mean, uh, what we showed extremely mild versus what she actually went through and to watch a human being suffer really affected me deeply because I I was really lacking the understanding of why don't you take her now, God? There's, she's not, she's not coming back from this, you know? Um, so um, I really struggled of what to do with all of that, those feelings. And not only did Sandra help me uh, process it, but she watched. So she knew exactly how I felt. So I feel like that made it easier for her to be able to put that on paper because she watched it through me. Um, mm-hmm you know, or things that would trigger me and I would just lose it. Um, so 
it made it it made it seem very real. So um we're, okay. so that that's a question that I kind of have for both of you. Did you did you guys did you did you gain any insight on each other from both having this movie like when 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 you when Sandra wrote this uh, Veronica, did you get a an insight of how she saw you or how she saw this situation? And same thing with Sandra. Did you kind of get a chance to look back and say, "This is the way I want to I want to I want to vocalize this" or "I want to write this down"? This you know that sort of thing. Did you guys get that kind of insight with each other on how both of you were viewing this as it was going down? Um, the enabling. Yeah. I never saw it. Oh wow! And she started talking about it. I never thought that that's what I was doing because. Um, her illness and her pain were exponential. I mean, it was just, but so I just, I'm just going to go in and do. And so that gradual of her losing her ability to do things, I probably took it away. Yeah. So, um, but I still didn't see it until she started talking to me about it. Well, I, yeah. So for, for me, I was kind of giving her a perspective from the outside looking in, but still caring about both of the people, because that's a hard, that's a hard thing to watch and a hard thing to go through. So that's, um, so really the Phoebe character is really my perspective of the whole thing and kind of what I said to her, not verbatim, but kind of like, you know, it's like snap out of it, you know, because sometimes she would get lost yeah. in it. And it's like, you have to come back because you are still here. So be here now, you know, and heal, but be here, you know, so. she. We had a, a phone call because Sandra was living in L.A. and I was living in Atlanta when we reconnected. And I was having one of my, and this was, oh my gosh, it hadn't even... <laughs> It hadn't even been maybe within, I don't know, four or five months where we'd really reconnected on the phone and we hadn't seen each other yet. And I was just having one of my anxietous moments and just spinning. spinning. And she was like, I don't give a (laughs) 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 And about what you're feeling and what you're saying. And I just pulled the phone away and was like, (laughs) Stopped me, and I was like, "Well, that wasn't very yeah. nice." It's a tough love. <laughs> she was like, "Sorry, but you were losing." <laughs> right, and all of a sudden, I could breathe, and it was fine. And <laughs> it, it sounds like she phoebed you. Yes, that's, exactly. that's what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. I did. She so did. So in those moments, I'm laughing because I'm like, "That's my wife." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's great. She, you know, she was able to see because she met me years ago. So she met me before I was, you know, lost. And so I think she knew how to how to help me find myself. You know, yeah, because I was not laughing. Nothing was funny. Right. I was angry all the time and and or crying. So yeah. it was. It was uh, it was not a pretty place. <laughs> yeah, one one of the things I wanted to ask too, uh, you know this this film gave uh, a little different perspective uh, than than how a lot of other films are 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 written, right? It, instead of from uh, maybe the person who's struggling, it was really kind of putting focus on the caretaker, right? Uh, and 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 drawing that in, uh, which is is you know it, it's probably one of those that. A lot of people don't think about the caretaker. No. They're thinking about the person that's going through all of the all of the pain and the agony, and everything else, and and not thinking about the pain and the agony that the caretaker is going through. Uh, yeah. Can you speak to that on on just being very deliberate in putting the story focused around kind of that area? Well, I'll go first and then let her because just like what you said, the caretaker gets no help, sometimes for real, no help, no help from society, no help from family, no help. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. we really wanted them to know that somebody sees you, somebody feels your pain. And even at the end of the movie, our friend Teresa 
she had been taking care of her mom and literally died, what, like a month after her mother died? Barely two months. Oh, wow. Barely two months. And, and it was so, and she was so sick. And I, knowing her, and she's maybe about 10 years older than me, knowing her, and she was also in the film business. business yeah. And she'd been taking care of her mother, who was terminal for two years with lung cancer. Same thing that she was ignoring. I got, she, I got to get mama better. Like she wouldn't, we stopped going to lunch. We used to do lunches together. Now, as soon as I get mama better is what she would yeah. say. And we'll start doing our thing again. And literally right after her mom died, pow, she was gone. And we were getting ready to shoot Rosalind. Oh, wow. You know, we, had, we had finished it. We were like prepping it, trying to get different things going. And wow, that hit us like a freight train. Yeah, because I saw like, her, oh I, I went over to help Ozark with a, a stunt unit. She was working on that show as the production coordinator. Her mother had just passed. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because I hadn't seen her. And I walked into that office to, to have a few days of prep. And she hugged me and started to cry. And I'm holding her. And then she's laughing. She had this great laugh. And she's like, I went out and bought waterproof mascara because I knew when I saw you, I was going to start. <laughs> it's amazing how one person could do that sort of thing. Yes. And um, I just loved her. She was such a wonderful human being and such a good friend. And, and, uh, but anyway, she went home sick that night. And the next day she was in the hospital oh. and she, she lit, she passed away two weeks later. And uh, I was very fortunate that I am who I am and my wife is who she is because Teresa said she didn't want to see anybody. And I was so upset about it. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> when Robin died, she just showed up at the door mm -hmm. and pushed herself in my house. So Sandra goes, you need to go, just go. Mm -hmm. So I did, I called her brother and he was like, yeah, just come. She's going to be mad. I don't care. I walked mm -hmm. in the hospital. She couldn't talk and she just wagged her finger at me. <laughs> and I said, too bad. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. You right. showed up for me. I'm, I'm here for you. for you. So get over it. Yeah. And then she was like, oh, and I'm trying to introduce me to everybody. And like, this is funny. I always talk about running. This is Very cool. So, it, well, I know you're... To... So... Well, I, I know you were talking uh, at, at Dubuque there about, uh, you know, not... I think your comment was when, when you were taking care of your partner for, I, I believe close to eight years. Is that, is that right? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and th there were times that you realized that, or maybe afterwards that you weren't taking care of yourself either at, at that point yeah. in time. And I know you spoke to that a little bit uh, up there. Um, yeah. I know that was eye opening to me anyway. Absolutely. And I feel like this is, this is something that'll speak to caretakers because the, again, like Clint said, you didn't really, don't really get to see this side of the story and it goes to a very dark place. And I think that the caretakers uh, are kind of the, that forgotten person. I feel like this really covers that. It'll speak to a lot of people that didn't even know that they needed to be spoken to, and I think that's very cool. Um, an, another thing Clint mentioned was the 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 characters, the cast. Uh, you had a very he mentioned this in Dubuque. You guys had a uh, you knew the cast very well, which made this this a easier transition. Is that correct? Correct to try and try and you know uh, pull off what you were looking for with your characters and stuff like that. Is that is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Um, we, it, it was pretty easy casting. We did one. Re well, Phoebe, we knew who that was going to be. Um, it was an actress that I had, I was working with currently at that time and, and had worked with her for a few years and we had developed a, a, a nice friendship. And so it was a no brainer. And, uh, and she was like, I'll make myself available, whatever. Yeah. And then the other, we, we had a cast. We had a casting, and I think there were three or four girls that we read, but it ended up um, uh, Maria and um, Erica. And Erica happened to be already best, best friends, friends and had been, and we didn't Perfect. know that. Yeah, because they because they came to audition on separate days. So when we cast them, and then found out, oh, they and best friends for real. And they, oh, they, you they, you found out after you cast them. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yes. awesome. Yeah, that is yep. amazing. So, and so it just was like, oh, this is going to be great. And then I invited the two girls over and I said, I really want to talk about this opening scene. And I said, and that connection between them. And I, you know, because I wanted to do um, uh, the, the Paris scene, that, yep. that yeah. um, intimate scene and have it feel genuine, but 
not make it so over the top that it would have made them uncomfortable. And mm-hmm. then you would, you would feel that. So, um, I talked with the girls and, and heard their thoughts and their ideas. And then we just did a, a small little clothed rehearsal. And I was very pleased with mm-hmm. the things that they had talked about and what they came up with. Okay. Um, it, it augmented slightly because of um, what we could and couldn't do um, in, in, in the room with, you know, the equipment we did and didn't have. Nope. Um, but it, I, I'm just very happy with it. And I thought it was very beautiful. So yeah, I, I, I thought the chemistry between the two of them throughout the entire movie was, I mean, once you say that they're friends, yeah, it's like, you can, yeah, you can tell. Right. Uh, I also say, uh, the the actor that played Phoebe, uh, you want to be her friend? Has, because I want to be her hats friend. Hats off to her. I, I thought I thought her performance in this movie was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. I I loved. I just I loved the. Uh, she brought a sense of joy. Yeah. Uh, but also that sternness, right? Like uh-huh. kind of throughout that whole film, and it's like just when things are, you know, you you feel like you're getting drugged down, and then all of a sudden she's back in the in the picture again and it's like okay okay all right i'm back <laughs> yeah <laughs> wipe the tear away and i'm i'm back in this right, right. <laughs> you know? phoebe was an instantly likable character and i don't want to i don't want to compare this movie to talladega nights but i'm about to do it because you know there's that, there's that scene in there where the gr- where the grandma talks to the kids and he's like you're gonna break us like wild horses aren't you and that's what i got from phoebe <laughs> she's like i'm gonna break you like wild horses here <laughs> so that's awesome. i bet that's the first that's comparison awesome. to Talladega Nights you've ever had. <laughs> yes. yes, indeed, but I'll take it. It's perfect. Oh it's perfect. So wow, I don't even yeah. know where to go from there, Jed. Yeah. Well, I, I do want to say that that opening scene, that was beautiful. There was a lot of beautiful scenes in there. And like I said, where you focused on the wall of the pictures, that was another one that I thought was really cool. Um, can, you, can you talk to me a little bit about the cine- cinematography and how that worked? Because I think in Dubuque, you said that it was, you know, like the lighting in the bathroom had to be right. So it was like you had to work everything around the timing of the lighting in the natural lighting and that sort of thing to get the right scenes. Is that correct? Correct. Because in that house, there was no, <clears throat> cause a lot of times they'll put lights out on the roof or a balcony and in the bedroom, there was a little balcony, but it didn't stretch around to the bathroom. Mm. So um, we hadn't to be truthful. We hadn't because I wasn't a Dean. I was directing. So not really thinking about that. Um, we hadn't really planned out the time for the bathroom, but we were going to do the bathroom actually, I think the next day, the next morning, but we were in the living, in the, in the bedroom. And I walked in the bathroom because that's where I was standing with my monitor um, to be out of the shot, to watch what was happening. And I walked in there and the light was just pouring in from the blinds. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> we need to come <laughs> into this bathroom right now. So I can put, you know, we can put her in this, this um, natural light. Cause I knew, I didn't know if, what the next day's mm-hmm. weather was going to be. As a matter of fact, I think it was cloudy. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so everybody was like, okay. So we hurried up and changed and put her in there. And, and the girls were just all about it. What, what do we need to do? You know? Oh, okay. I've got to get in the tub. All right. All right. I'm in. You know? mm-hmm. So it was, it was, it was that- wonderful. That bathroom scene, uh, it was one of those. I mean, I thought the lighting was, uh, you did a great job of that because the lighting was absolutely, absolutely wonderful. But the connection between the two, you almost see like, if I think of a bath, a bath is a, a relax, right? That's a relaxing time. It's warm, you know, like it just, <laughs> if, I, if, I'm, if I'm hung over, I'm taking a bath the next day, right? Yeah, yeah. It's making me feel better. Uh, and when I'm, I'm watching that scene, uh, you can almost see that like she's in pain right during that and it's like that i felt was a touching moment because it's like a thing that's supposed to be relaxing to 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 nearly everybody right is not relaxing to her uh and i i don't it just it hit me and i don't know if you're if that was intentional or how they uh how you know how that was written but i I, at least that's what i took away from that that moment that that's definitely uh um taken right out of reality um the, the warmth of the water uh, soothed her pain, but touching her at all, her skin, she was always on fire. So she was always in pain. And I, I did that. I put her in the tub three days, three times a week, three times a day, sorry. Oh, wow. um, because it would help um, 
it would help her, but it was also, it was just hard. It was hard to get her in the tub. It was hard to get her out of the tub. I couldn't dry her with a towel. I had to dry her with a hair dryer because she couldn't take even being rubbed with a towel, even pat dry oh. with a towel. So, um, um, so that's, that's why I wanted to put that, put that in there. So you, you mentioned at the beginning of the movie, uh, there was a, a, a voiceover that talked about, um, God was trying you and all this stuff. I, I can't remember the exact quote, but I, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Did the, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I know the answer to this, but I'm sure this tested your faith. And, and can you talk a little bit about that and like how that mental, because that, I, I know that was a, the, a strong factor for the movie and, and stuff like that. So I just, how did that, how did that play in for you during these times? Um, I've definitely talked to Sandra about this because being, being with my wife's um, spirituality is, is forefront. It's, it's, it's everything it, that's first and everything else is behind that. Um, so, um, and I didn't have time for myself. I didn't have time to sit and have a conversation with God. I didn't, you know, I didn't have the brain space. Uh, I was just working hard, not to, trying not to kill her you know, with the medication and the, uh, morphine, the amount of morphine that I was giving her. Um, but there were these, uh, epiphanies that I had along the way that made me feel like I got you. Um, uh, I had to drive, it took 45 minutes to get to Emory hospital. And we went there every Friday and we'd be there for 12 hours of her therapy, her chemotherapy or other drug medication therapies. And, uh, if I, the car bumped or if I slowed down too fast, it all hurt her. So I would pray mm -hmm. about getting green lights for 45 minutes. And every wow. Friday I would have a green light at every intersection. No kidding. That is awesome. That is a, that, that see, that's, a, that's a cool yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would pray about it. God, you know, I need those green lights tomorrow. And, um, uh, and then, um, a therapist that I finally was able to talk Robin into going to, to help her process where she is, where she's going, you know, um, and help us communicate because it did, it did get pretty hairy. Um, and this woman said to me, um, her name is Jill Kahn. She said to me one day, uh, because she saw me too. She just didn't see her. She saw me too. And I needed that. And she told me one day, she said, breathe in, believe in. And that just was like, of course, I need to breathe and I need to know that he's there. So I wrote that down and in my kitchen, Almost everywhere I was on, on that main floor, I always had to be able to see her because um, she had a hard time projecting because her throat was being affected by chemo and the medication. And so everything was figured so I could see her from wherever I was, whether it was preparing her food or medication or whatnot. But on this one door that um, I had it um, kind of slightly ajar so I could still see in, but on the door, I wrote that. So every time, I, wherever I looked, I could see that sign and her. And I'll tell you, I probably stared at that a million times in those eight years. And that quote just, you know, I mean, I just choke up now just even thinking yeah. about it. Just help remind me, you know, he's there, those green lights and, um, and some other massive epiphanies that I, I had questioned, God, why did you do that to me then? Why did I go through that experience? Oh, fast forward 20 years. I'm using that now nope. for this experience. Why, you know, um, I mean, there's a whole other um, story to that, but it was constant, constant little moments. Um, the night she passed away. This is another thing. Uh, my younger sister would try and help as much as she could. But the night that, or the day that uh, um, hospice came in, uh, the same, we had a nurse that we knew and she came in and she says, you know, Robin's not gonna live another 24 hours. 
And I was so stuck into, well, this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. I'm going to take care of her for the rest of my life. This is it. I never saw that she was actually going to die. I, although I knew she was going to die, but I didn't. And it really hit me like, no, no, she's, she's going to bounce back like she did last year. And the nurse was like, no, honey, not, not this time. So they gave me different medication that you give to somebody that's about to, to go. Um, and she was very specific on when you need to give this to her so she won't drown, you know, because things start to just t- liquefy. So I'm getting all this information. My sister comes over and I'm like this, you know, I'm just don't know what to do. Um, so uh, that night uh, my sister brought, I was laying on the couch and I had Robin in the hospital bed and she hadn't spoken in hours. And uh, uh, I'm laying down and my sister had a little blow up bed by my feet. And she sat up and she was like, what? And I said, sis, I'm not talking. I'm trying to sleep. Because I knew we had like four or five hours before I needed to medicate her. And she goes, you don't hear that? And I said, hear what? And we lived on a very kind of quiet residential street with a lot of young children. So by eight o'clock, it was dead silent in our neighborhood. And I said, sis, I hear nothing. She goes, you don't hear all that talking? Like, like, like uh, I hear all these conversations, mm. but she couldn't make out what they were saying. I was like, mm. well, sis, I don't hear anything. She's like, okay. So she laid down, I laid down. And two seconds later, I sat up, sis, do you hear that choir? I could hear a choir. You're kidding me. I could hear a choir wow. singing. And my sister's like, I don't hear it. I'm like, I hear a whole f- choir. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like they were outside, you know, playing in the yard. And uh, she's like, I don't hear it. I'm like, okay, that's all right. I'm like, I can't sleep now. So let's watch Robin's favorite movie. Maybe that'll be soothing for her. <laughs> yeah. So put it on and we sat there and then it was time to give her her medication and I gave it to her and you know was holding her and I finally said you know it's okay if you go and she hadn't spoke in hours I mean like probably one foot over and she went "Uh uh-huh and then she went like she was just waiting you know for me to say that but those moments were You know, yeah. and, and even earlier that day, I actually had told Sandra this earlier that day from the same spot in the kitchen, if I leaned over, I could see the front door and our, the, our door was like a heavy solid wood door and you could hear it when it opened. And that door opened so many times during that day, but it didn't open. Oh. So it was almost like spirits were just lining yeah. up coming in you know her ancestors her family her you know her father her sister, you know um and i just kept okay come on in and i just started saying that come really? on in because i knew it, it's not there's no human yeah. at that door these spirits are coming in that door yeah and uh it was it was i not gonna lie i feel stuff like that all the time um, so it just was like, okay, good. I'm glad somebody's here to come and be with her because Absolutely. nobody came, no, nobody came yeah. to, to, to see her, no family well, one niece, but it was, it was, yeah, it was, I, I, it was not. I say you, you called that out, uh, in the, in, you know, towards the end of, of Roslyn, right. And, and saying that, you know, cause, um, I remember the line of, of, I, I I'm the only one that has been here, you know, and, yeah. and through everything, right? Through through thick and thin and and nobody else has been here and and it sounds like that uh that came from from your story as well. Yeah. And yeah, when when Sandra wrote that and she was like, "Babe, I want you to this is read this." I was I was on the floor because it, it it couldn't have been more true. I mean, and that's which yeah. made me so sad. Yeah. For her, it made me, you know, that's what really hurt me the most. Not that don't you don't I don't need your help. She needs to know. Yeah. She needed to have that extra love. She needed to feel seen. 
and that she was important enough to, I'm going to come and see you. And it's, it's an, it's an incredible to, and I, I first, first off, I just want to uh, say thank you for, for sharing that and like yeah. being so open about it and like, tell, cause this is a story that not many people get to see and that sort of thing. So I, right. I really appreciate both of you being so open about this and just talking about it. Cause that's, like I said, that's going to be therapeutic for somebody out there this season that I'm, I'm sure there are people that are going to respond to that and be like, wow, I needed this. You know, I needed to see this. I needed to see, even, like I said, you know, uh, when I was watching it, there was a lot of stuff that I just, I didn't expect. I didn't think about the fact that, you know, the caretaker and all that stuff. I didn't think about the enabling. I, there was a lot of stuff there that I just wasn't prepared for. And it, and it took that turn. That's very cool. And I really appreciate you doing that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very honored that you guys saw that it was important. And that, you know, I mean, it's definitely not, you know, uh, it's not action. It's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's deep. Um, and, but everybody goes through some form of experience mm-hmm. like this. And I feel if we talk more about it and, and definitely shining a light on the caregiver, because in my journey of, of going from hospital to doctors, you know, doctor's appointments, this and that, you know, they do, oops, you know, take care of yourself. You know, no. the caregivers, they, they tend to die, you know, and, and I didn't really take it seriously until it was really affect. I mean, I'm lucky I have this much hair on my head. I was damn near <laughs> bald when Sandra Ooh. came back into my life and she's like, we're going to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to fix yeah. that here, babe. <laughs> And uh, even my hairdresser is like, what are you doing? Your hair is just getting thicker and thicker. It's like, well, I'm not depressed. <laughs> but my, whole, my whole body just went kookaloo, you know. Yeah. Well, but to help other people see that there's a way out of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Know, really- well, you, you, you talked about the action movies and stuff like that. Uh, I do want to ask, because this is something we, I like to ask our guests. Get our guests. Guests. Uh, it, but for both of you, if you had one movie to recommend, like a, a, a movie that says, you know, if it's just an, a, a random movie fan, you're like, you've got to see this movie. And, and, and Veronica, I don't know if it was, if it was the visit for you or, or if that's what it would be, but I would love, I would love to hear a, 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 one from each of you of what your, what your go-to movie is. My go-to movie is the Godfather. Hands hey, yeah. That's a flex right there. That's what that is. <laughs> I'm starting at the top and I'm not going anywhere from that but there. <laughs> oh, I mean everything, music, cast, absolutely production design, direction, writing, oh, everything. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. That's all right. That's that is a work of art, and yes. I totally agree. Yes. Yeah. So Veronica, would you would yours be the visit then? Oh, <sighs> And this is a tough. This well, is a tough thing to ask movie fans, but I just love the question. I'm gonna have to say the shining. I'm gonna oh, have to say the shining. The shining. Yeah. Oh. So here's the here's the difference between you and I, Veronica. Is, is the shining is one of the the only Stephen King uh, uh, adaptations that I don't love. Like I I just I've never, and I think it was because I watched it so late in life that like it'd been out, you know. And I just I love uh, Jack Nicholson's role. I loved, the, but I just. It just wasn't for me, and my and my mom, who's a big horror fan and big Stephen King fan, got me into this. She loves it, but it's just never been my thing. So I don't know. Yeah, you needed to see it early. Actually, it's yeah. funny. My sister just said the same thing. She just finally watched it in her adult life. She goes, "Yeah, it just didn't, it just didn't scare yeah. me. Um, the, it scared the, me." <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Sleep. Have you seen Doctor Sleep? Doctor Sleep. Is great. Yeah. <laughs> I was afraid, but I saw it as a teenager too. So oh, that's yeah. Crazy. Seeing it as a teenager is good. Those two little girls. Uh-uh. See, I still <laughs> like that's what that. my wife says. Look, yeah. kids are kids are creepy. <laughs> <laughs> you put a kid in a horror movie, and it's yeah. terrifying. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, one last question for y'all. Uh, we I, we'd always like to ask, what's next? What's the what's the next project that uh, that we get to look forward to uh, to seeing from y'all? Uh, and and then that way we can start prepping to get you on here again. You know. Yeah. Ironically, it's probably going to be a horror movie. Oh, yeah. really? That's going to be awesome. Are you guys doing? Are you collaborating on this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Give me, give me, give me, and it'll be, and it'll be the first one that I have, I have ever written. So give me, be, give me a little bit of it. Give me something off of it. Get, what, what's it going to be about? Do you have any? We're, we're still working. Actually, we haven't. We're, we've 
we know we're going to do that. We just don't know yet. Okay. We haven't worked okay. on um, Cause she's it's also, she's also trying to finish writing a pilot. Right. right. So yes. for me to dump in, her life, let's think about this is not, is not good for where she's at. So I need to give her that space. Um, but um, I did, and I'm not sure if gentlemen, if you were there, I did just do my first directing job on a, um, a new show called the big door prize. So oh, nice. Um, that's a half hour comedy on Apple plus. So I did oh, that. Great. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Not sure when that's going to air. As a matter of fact, I think they're probably still f- finishing it now, but, um, and then anything past that, um, I can't mention because it's not greenlit yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Perfect. <laughs> nope. Right. Well, well, I would just like to say congratulations again on on making Rosalind uh, absolutely beautiful film, uh, and thank you so much again for taking time out of your out of your schedules to to come here and uh, and have a chat with us. So thank you. Yeah, and truly, like I said, just opening up like this. This is this is I love that. I love that you. It's a very open conversation. Very cool. I, I appreciate it from both of you, ladies. Well, you you both made it super so, easy. Super easy this, 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 and. This is- Thank this you for awesome. you guys inviting were so, us. So kind in yeah. Iowa. And I was like, babe, <laughs> these two guys. We gotta talk to them. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I love hearing right. that too. <laughs> All right. So well, thank we'll, you. Yep. Thank you well, thank you. Hey, just another thanks to Sandra and Veronica for coming on our podcast here and, and having a, you know, Really a great conversation a around this A roller coaster story. of a conversation because that went, like, we had uh, all the emotions in there. There was <laughs> we sadness. Laughed, we <laughs> cried. We did, yeah, we did it all right that's there. That's exactly right. That's, that's perfect. Um, that's, that's what we need to be doing. I love it. This is, Rosalind is just an absolute beautiful film. Uh, Chad and I would urge you to go see it. Actually, here's their website right here that yep. you can end up uh, going and checking out uh, all of their work. Uh, and looking forward to this horror film that they're putting Me together. Me too, man. Too. Like, like a horror film, I'm, I'm in. That's that's going to be exciting because Sanders' white writing is going to be great for that. And yeah, Absolutely. I can't wait to see. Uh, also, I I looked it up. I uh, just went to YouTube and looked uh, looked up Rosalind uh, R O S A L I N D yep. short. Yeah. And then I found yep. it that way. That's so right. it was yeah. really easy to do that way too. So it's very simple. You don't have to go to a website and you can watch it on your YouTube TV. So yeah. And speaking of YouTube, be sure to smash that subscribe button. Give us a like. Uh, ring the bell to get notified and, and the follow uh, button. We need to get follow. I know. That's follow. what I'm saying. Subscribe. Follow. Punch that yeah. subscribe button. So, all right. Well, with that, the credits are rolling. The lights are coming on. That's the end of the show.